class B operation. The typical uh, class B operation circuit, uh, you probably also studied this one, is made with two devices. In this case, we focus on VJT. There is a PMP and an, and an NPN transistor. The input voltage will uh, bias uh, when it is positive, positive, the NPN transistor, when it is negative, the PMP transistor. The devices are biased so that when the, there is no input signal, the output is zero. As a result, when there is no signal on the input, since the output is zero, the input is zero, the base to emitter voltage is not enough to switch on neither Q1, neither Q2, these two devices are uh, switched off. There is no current flowing. And this circuit is much more efficient. We just uh, start seeing because when the input is zero, it's, it's not dissipating any power. It will dissipate only when some input voltage, some input signal arise. Uh, it can be easily seen that these devices are, uh, this kind of amplifier is less linear than the class A amplifier. It will have a problem on the zero crossing here. But we now start uh, discussing about the circuit, about the efficiency. The power efficiency is calculating assuming again a linear operation. This can be done because with these voltage numbers, we are talking about 25 positive volts and minus 25 negative volts. The voltage range is 50 volts. And this means that the 0.7 volts, let's say one volt, that we need to switch on the NPN transistor or to switch off the PMP transistor, to switch on the PMP transistor are negligible with respect to 25 positive and 25 negative volts. If you have 5 volts of supply voltage, this is important. Your output sinusoid will have a lot of steps, a lot of non-linearities. But for a 25 volts application, this is less important. However, let us assume a linear operation up to the limit values and the sinusoidal input. The current plot will be sinusoidal for the NPN transistor and then sinusoidal for the PMP transistor up to a maximum current. The power absorbed from the power supply will be simply calculated as the VCC or minus VCC multiplied by the current that goes on the load. We need to calculate uh, this uh, up to half of the period and multiply by two. Uh, this is, it is I maximum multiplied by sinusoid, just half a period. You can calculate this integral and you will have twice VCC multiplied I max divided pi. The power on the load again is VP multiplied IP divided by two. And in this case, again, you have the peak value that is VCC and the peak current that is the maximum current that we have here. We can calculate the power efficiency as the ratio of PL max divided PS and you get pi divided by 4. That is around 0.78, that is 78.5%. That is a huge step forward if we compare to 25% that we had before. And it is surely a very nice advantage to pay just to pay just with the small nonlinearity that we have on the zero crossing. But this is still not enough. The, the, uh, we are still very far from what we need for a real power circuit. For a real, real power circuit, we want more than 90%. Below 90%, you cannot sell anything. And uh, for 
power circuits for particular dedicated application you can reach as high as 98% of efficiency. We can uh, repeat our uh, discussion about the power balance for these class B amplifiers and again write that the power taken from the power supply from the supply is equal to the power dissipated on the on the devices plus the power that you dissipated on the load. This is the AC power, the DC power is zero. Uh, here we have that the power dissipation on the devices is, is uh, zero if we have zero power on the load. This means that uh, we need to calculate the power dissipation on both devices as a function of the output signal and we get that the power dissipated on the device is equal to the power from the supply minus the power on the load. That we can calculate as twice VCC IP divided pi minus uh, we have the um, power on the load multiplied since it is a resistive load the square of the current multiplied by, res by the resistance divided by 2. This is a second order function in IP. You can uh, calculate the maximum, the, you calculate the, 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 the derivative of this function, and you get this maximum power current, substitute this in uh, A, and get the maximum power on the device this is twice Vcc squared divided square root pi multiplied the resistance of the load. This uh, ratio, PD max divided the maximum power on the load, is 0.4. From the previous results, we can then see the maximum power conversion efficiency is 78%, more or less, something less. You are not, never ideal. The total power dissipation on both devices is 40% of the maximum power on the output. This means that since we have two devices, each one has to dissipate just 20% on the power on the load. That is much better than before. Before we had one device that had to dissipate, in the worst case, twice the power of the load. And if we put, we put some numbers, we want a, a power output of 100 watts, you need a power supply of at least 130 watts, that is not bad. And to dissipate a maximum of 100 volts on the load, you need two devices, each one able to dissipate, dissipate 20 volts, much better than before. In order to conclude this, uh, this uh, discussion, class B, class B amplifier is much better than class A. We pay this with the linearity on the output. But still, this is not enough. Imagine that if we want to transfer 10 kilowatts on the output, with this kind of efficiency, we need to dissipate more than 2 kilowatts on the devices. And uh, there are possibly no packages able to dissipate this amount of power. Possibly, it's most, it's most probable that you need to put this in water or in, in liquid nitrogen in order to dissipate this amount of power. And this is not feasible from the cost point of view.